Good evening, ladies and gentlemen of the press, and I'd like to, in a special way, welcome all of you to this very special edition of the press briefing. And today we will be addressing a singular subject that has to do with Green Cape Mount County and the emerging situation. Uh, but before I go into detail, I'd like to introduce to you uh, our team. You see here is a joint effort between the Executive Mansion, the Library National Police, and the Ministry of Information. Uh, on my far left is the representative, particularly the IG uh, Inspector General Gregory Corman of the Library National Police. On my immediate left is the Minister of Information, Minister Jerry Limekia. And on my immediate right, you have uh, the Deputy Minister of Public Affairs for the Ministry of State for Presidential Affairs, Deputy Minister Anthony Kessely, and uh, our own brother Daniel Sano of the Ministry, if I missed the names and all of that. But this press briefing, as I said, is on a singular subject of the situation happening in King George. The Executive Mansion is concerned about the current violence situation taking place at the Beer Mountain mining company and the citizens of that part of the country. Um, cabinet meeting held with cabinet members in His Excellency President Joseph Lima Huacai. At the conclusion of that meeting, um, and due to the emerging information that His Excellency received, the Excellency set up a committee of sector ministers to immediately, along with the Library National Police, to follow up on the current situation as it emerged and the uh, sector ministers that were designated to be able to go to King Job and follow up with the current protest action taking place in that part of the country. The ministers named were the Minister of Justice, the Minister of Mines and Energy, the Minister of Labor, and the head of the National Bureau of Concession, um, along and in close collaboration with the Inspector General of the Library National Police. So His Excellency is very concerned uh, and he's hoping um, at the end of the investigation, the team that was dispatched will be able to provide full information as to the details. Um, with the details of, or in terms of casualties, and any other detail relating to the situation in King John, the protest action, um, we will turn to the team, the Ministry of Information, Culture, and Tourism, um, particularly Minister uh, who was recently confirmed, <laughs> Jerry Mick Matthew Pia. Welcome, Minister. Recently, when we appear for our confirmation year, we have showed the Liberian Senate that one of the things we will do is to give information to the public in a timely manner. We also promise that we will be very truthful in our interaction with the public so as to have the kind of integrity we should have as a government. If you have a government that is not trusted by the people, you have a problem. So it is our job to ensure that the people trust their government, and the way to do that is to be very honest and transparent in all that we do. All of you have been following the situation on 40 in King Job, Green Cape County. And let me start by saying the situation there did not start with the current administration. There has been issue, issues in King Job. But of recent, the issues escalated. And as you may have been following on social media, there's been a problem. Everyone got their own interpretation, but we chose to not give you the government side of the story. There have been protests uh, in King John. Of course, the government has security forces deployed there. The individuals 
who were protesting were also armed. As a result of that, whatever was happening there escalated beyond control. In the event, one citizen was killed. The exact situation concerning how that citizen got killed is still being investigated. Also, nine officers of the Liberian National Police were injured. One of the officers, who is an ERU personnel, was injured in the head. Another officer received his injury on the leg. About 18 persons of protesters, if you may, were arrested. It was interesting to also know that the police station, the police barrack, and a gym that is attached to the facility were all destroyed by the protesters. The technical and vocational school in the area was also completely vandalized by the protesters. As we speak currently, the situation is somehow calm, but very fluid. The Inspector General of Police is here. He could add all the information he has, but we want to assure you that the government is fully involved with what is taking place there. As uh, the press secretary said, the president dispatched a team. You'll be wondering why those individuals, the labor ministry is associated with workforce. The Bureau of Concession, that's a concession area. So all the individuals that were named the Minister of Lands and Mines, they are people whose job you know, it's exactly associated with what is taking place there. Our country is evolving. People complain that there's no job. I said at the confirmation hearing, when we're talking all the big talks about tourism, I did say that tourists would not come here when they think the year or bad news. When concession areas are being attacked, and one of the things we're very concerned about is the fact that we were told that one of the individuals leading protesters against security forces is a lawmaker. We cannot run our country that way. The government would like to express regret for the death of the citizen who died. But at the same time, we must understand that all these security officers are people who also got life. They leave their wives, their children, and their family members who want to serve the state. In the event where in the discharge of their duties, they themselves are under threat, they will have to act consistent with their own regulations. But the fact that there is a death of a citizen is something that the government regrets. We also sympathize with those officers, the nine officers who are wounded. The one that is wounded in the head, no one can say how it will end. So we have to keep our country in a way that shows to the rest of the world that we are ready for business. We cannot afford to make our country a lawless place. There are problems all over the place, different concession areas. Problems not created by this government. This government has been in power barely a month. And it's committed to solving some of those problems. But should we use violence as a means of solving problems that we have? We don't think so. So we wanted to make sure that away from all the different speculations on social media, we wanted you to have formal information from the government, and that's what we do. We'd like to pause here so that you can ask questions once you have, and at that point,
find the Inspector General of Police, uh, who are we allowed to say something if he has, before we take your question, we assist in answering those questions, especially those that may be security related. Come on, come on. Good evening, all. Uh, I believe we've uh, captured most of the points, so I won't go into the details as the situation is still emerging. But one thing we can assure the country, uh, the entire nation, that calm and a semblance of order has been restored to the uh, areas that, uh, that we're speaking about. We have uh, a team of uh, officials of government from the uh, legislature and from the executive as well that are intervening at different levels. We move uh, sufficient uh, police officers uh, to provide the needed support and to maintain the level of uh, calm and order that has been established there. Uh, the situation uh, today is one that, that, that we are aggrieved of uh, in so many regards uh, because with the actions that are meant to protect lives and uh, property, leads to the loss of one of those that are intended to be protected regardless of whatever the situation. It's always uh, a sad moment. And uh, our condolences go out to the family, and we're asking the uh, general public, especially those in that area, to cooperate with the police and uh, assist us in these times to be able to maintain the peace while uh, the investigation goes on to get to the root cause and uh, the officer involved shooting as well. Uh, the team has been dispatched to, to ensure that uh, the procedures uh, were followed to uh, investigate the use of force continuum and to be able to come up with accurate information for, for the general public and to uh, the, the, the family as well. Uh, this administration at the National Police we will be uh, uh, accountable, we will be fair in our, our uh, investigations, so we, we owe it to the general public to uh, report truthfully so as soon as the investigation uh, as per the officer involved shooting is concluded, it will be released to the general public. However, we regret the loss of life. We sympathize with the, the officers mm -hmm. who are wounded and in the hospitals as well, and the uh, other citizen as well who uh, has a bullet wound as well in the hospital. Uh, today, uh, uh, the officers ex uh, exhibited maximum restraint. They uh, utilized every last uh, uh, community policing technique uh, uh, available to them. They uh, went into using uh, 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 their non-lethal weaponry uh, until it was completely exhausted. They uh, made frantic efforts to, to call on uh, lawmakers, to call on community leaders, to ask the protesters to back, to back up, and uh, the situation went to where it, it ended uh, as to where we are today. Uh, so uh, the investigation is ongoing in our, our I would like to start here and take questions uh, from the press. So thank you all very much. Um, we'll take a few questions. You'll call your name, your institution, and then you ask your question. Um, yeah. Yes. Uh, good evening. Uh, I.G. Sui, the platform. I.G. Coleman. Gregory. <laughs> sorry, sorry, my apologies. I.G. B. Gregory. Yeah, Oliver yeah, Williams. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. Well, uh, my name is Kelvin Daniel Fine, my friend. Uh, I listen to your the statement issue. Um, I'm concerned about the impact of the injury cost for the soldiers. Is it as a result of what? Because uh, you know, I, I was hearing that the the, the protesters carried with them a single bar. Well, amongst the protesters were uh, a couple of them who were armed with artisanal weapons. The, the uh, single barrel pistol, and uh, two of uh, two of the nine officers wounded received uh, a bullet from those uh, uh, weapons. Yes. Um, Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, Thank you. I'm Sylvester Trouple, and I work for the Spoon Network. Our minister, in your speech, you mentioned that uh, an individual who is also a lawmaker led the protesters. Would you mind naming that individual? And for the situation in Grand Cayman County, how long will it take you to totally count out the situation? Come again, the last part. How long will it take to do what? To count down the situation. All right. So, 
If we had all the facts about the name of who that lawmaker was, we would have said it. But it's still being investigated. And we, we, we want to leave it at that until the investigation is completed. The IG did say that some level of calm has been restored to the area. But I said the place is still fluid and tense. And as long as the situation remains that way, the security forces will remain engaged. But from time to time, we endeavor to update you until total calm is restored and we are convinced that the situation there has been resolved. Okay, Minister Pierre, my name is Tia Williams, and I report for Focus on Liberia Online Television. Mm -hmm. You indicated that some of the protesters were in arm. I'd like to know how did they get the arm? How would I know? What I would say to you is that, uh, and which was confirmed by the IG, is that they, they were armed. How they got it? Uh, all of that is being investigated. There is an ongoing, very active ongoing investigation. Okay. And a lot that, is, that are not known now will be subsequently known. Julius. So I have three concerns. One, our reporter in the county told us that a hospital that confirmed three persons dead. So as at what time? Are you reporting on one person being dead? That's one. Um, two, you mentioned about the issues being spilled over from previous administration. Uh, one could also say lots of these concessions were brought in when your party was in power uh, for your first two terms, and these issues were always existing. Are you trying to find excuses or what? No, we're not finding excuses. The point we're making is that this government has been in power for one month. And by the way, the period you're referencing, that the concession years were brought during that time, did you see what's going on now, going on there? Did you? Some happened in Yuba County. I'm one of the media people who covered uh, when there were protests in Yuba <coughs> County, in Yuba. So, Pardon we are, no, no, no. yeah, listen no, to me. We're currently talking about what is happening in Yuba. And that's the point I made. If we came to discuss problems all over the country, that's a different thing. Probably I will invite you to the Ministry of Information on Monday when I have my very first press conference. But for now, we're discussing King George, and my point is the issues for which the agitations are taking place but met on board. Government is continuity. That's why we're taking responsibility. And all I'm saying to you is that the government is committed to resolving those problems. And we think I was when they have this issue because it doesn't help you, it doesn't help me when all the people here out there is about violence. Who brings money here to do business here? What kind of investor would want to come in a country where people just wake up and agitate for everything, including violence that will wound police officers? By the way, I didn't say this. Two private citizens also had their homes burned down to ashes. Should we live like that? There are ordinary people like you, civilians. Why burn your homes? Why burn your own vocational, I mean, I mean, level oil and loot your own vocational institute? Meant to train people. You need police and security forces there. Why destroy your police body? The country is wanting in everything. And for every time we have issues, we should carry on those levels of, of destruction. That's not something any of us should have sympathy for. So then leave the quality of who brought concession, who didn't bring concession. We can talk about that on Monday. That's something we'll always be ready for. But we just talk to give you an update. You know, I know your reporter brief you. Spoon may have their reporter who brief them. But an official account from the government is important. With regards to the other question as to as of when the one person being there was reported, I had to give that to the IG. <coughs> so once again, uh, as far as as far as uh, I'm being informed as, uh, as of uh, 15 minutes before I walked in here, there was still one person reported there. As a matter of fact, uh, this, uh, when, when this person got shot immediately, uh, yeah, I made a call to the uh, John F. Kennedy Hospital uh, and asked for an ambulance to proceed to the scene. Uh, while the ambulance was in, 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 in to the scene, we made contact with the uh, doctors there to start to inform JFK of the uh, the, the level of wounds so the trauma ward could be prepared to uh, immediately receive the, the, the victim. Uh, 
the ambulance before we could get there, uh, we, we, we found another ambulance that started to bring them. So the, the time interval in, in, in providing that needed support as law enforcement officers to, to try to save the life of, the, of, of those who were shot was, uh, was, uh, was, was quite impeccable. Unfortunately, before the ambulance even got to GFT, the, uh, the, the, the victim was pronounced dead on arrival. As of the time of walking, there was no other uh, uh, fatality reported uh, that we knew of. So if you have some information, please share with us. Immediately, I will send officers there to uh, uh, check on that situation. Let me, let me add, Julius, that we said truth telling will be the hallmark of our administration. If we receive additional information that suggests that someone else died beyond the one person, we also come to be very truthful and says another person died. But as of the point, as the IG is saying, besides the one dead person, two other civilians were injured. Maybe a little bit. We didn't say that, just adding on to what we said. Two other civilians were injured in addition to the one person that died. This is our information as a government for now. If we have additional information that suggests that somebody else died, you'll be told the same way. Uh, thank you very much. My name is Paul Ben I report for the Post Media Network. Uh, what's the level of security now in that place? That is one and two. Uh, was the construction area, I mean, the company, was it also affected by the process? Good question. Okay. <coughs> When you, when, when, you, when, you, when you speak of the level of security, what are you referencing? You said a lot of security. Threat or security yes. presence? Yes, security presence. There's, there's a very, very huge security presence in that, in that area. We have, uh, at the police level, we have the command led by the uh, Commissioner of Police for Operation, uh, Commissioner Prince Davis. We have the uh, commander for the, uh, uh, the PSU and the commander for the ERMU there as well. Uh, we just had to dispatch the uh, PSU commander to another scene in, 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 in uh, a bathroom with a power to go in an emergency situation. But there's high security presence. We are in command. We are in control. Yeah. Okay, next question. Uh, the, the oh, the concession. Yeah, I mean, uh, there was se uh, serious property damage. We have reached out to the, the concessionaires to try to uh, uh, give us a list of all of the, the items that got damaged by, by, as part of the, our drone footage that we collected. We did see about at least uh, four or five machines, including a compactor, uh, excavator, and a front and stuff being a set of base, uh, including the police barracks and the police station as well with the, the guard group and the gym that was vandalized. There was also uh, a some point in time uh, the operation of one of the facilities where the, uh, uh, there was some serious looting going on. We uh, uh, asked the police to pick up because the only the only thing that was left at the time was uh, was live was live round. So since we were on a little uh, 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 we asked the police to back up so as to not engage them any further. Thank you. My name is Joseph Daniels, and I'm uh, okay, uh, You mentioned that it was the use of farm and ammunition for the testers. You also uh, mentioned that some of the testers were arrested. Yeah. Were they arrested along with the ones that you are talking about? If so, do we have any uh, picture evidence of that? My concern at this point in time has to do with the fact that uh, people are wounded, someone is dead, and the investigation is ongoing. I can tell you that yes, indeed, uh, a weapon was used because there's evidence by the wounded officers we have in the hospital. Whether we are, uh, uh, that, that weapon has been apprehended or not, I cannot say, but as the investigation unfolds, the more information we get, we will continue to update you. But there's evidence that artisanal uh, weapon was used because you have officers who are wounded, the pellets are within them. At this point in time, why you're standing asking this question is you see the pain. The pain is evident. So we'll take any further last question, and then if not, we will... Do you know that Steve Lincoln got additional question? No, yes, we answer. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yes. Yeah, my name is Samson David, and I report for ERBC. 
Were you, were you able to establish the actual cause of the incident in the area? Well, uh, the, the actual cause will be uh, established by the investigation. Let's not preempt. I mean, we could, we could assert to a lot of things right now. They have a petition that has been presented. Uh, they have a, a, a multiple years that they, they engage in. So when we, when we get the total information, at least that would be released to you. Because if we start with these bits and pieces now, we might give uh, you in the wrong way. And, and even this is in the investigation as well. Thank you. Thank you, uh, So, this process will be ongoing. Tomorrow, the press secretary will have a, a normal, regular briefing. If she got some information to give to you, she will. Like I said, on Monday, there will be a major press conference at the Ministry of Information beyond the situation in King George. Notwithstanding, if there are additional updates from King George, we'll also provide those updates to the press. So, like he said, the investigation is ongoing. No facts will come up. We'll continue to update you. But we thought as a government it was important to say something to our people about what has happened. So, we want to thank you for coming. Could I have a close of press conference and she, uh, But we have more and more and more engagement with the media on this administration. We're not going to shy away from you. We always come to you, and like I said, we'll be people. You know, things happen, and if we, want, if we are interested in having the confidence of the people, then we ought to be true for all of the time. And we'll get to do just that. Well. Let me thank Kula in my absence who come here and confirm Kula has been doing a wonderful job. Thank you, Comrade. Uh -huh. So let me say a very big thank you to all of you uh, for the, as you all know, this was a special press briefing. And uh, since we started, we started with a very open process, meaning that this government will remain open. This is the commitment of the president, and this is why, as you have seen over the past weeks, we have consistently held our weekly press briefing. We do intend to continue to update you, especially on issues and information about the presidency, about the president, the office of His Excellency President Joseph Mumakwakai. And the reason why, from time to time, you will see um, individuals, members of the cabinet, different ministers, different heads of public corporation, because one of the other issues that we have seen, learning from the past, but this government will be coordinated government. We will coordinate our communications arm. We will ensure that anything relating to the presidency comes from the executive mansion. Issues relating to the general overview of the government or general issues relating to the government, you will see the Ministry of Information. Any issues specifically relating to a specific sector within our governance structure, you will see those specific individuals and specific authorities in charge of those information. Mm -hmm. That is why this evening you saw a collaborative effort between the Office of the President, His Excellency Joseph Imabuakai, the Minister of Information, because it has to do with the entire country, and you saw specifically because it, it has to do with law and order, and the issue of casualties, and every, all these other issues. That's why you see the Inspector General of Police. As time goes on, you will see the continuation of this level of coordination between all arms of government, as we all work together to inform the public, to keep the public informed on issues relating to this government. So thank you again. On tomorrow, we'll have our press briefing covering issues of His Excellency President Joseph Ima Boakai and the presidency, his activities, his work, all the questions that you have relating to His Excellency President Boakai, we can be able to take those concerns. So again, we look forward to seeing you tomorrow, and let me again say thank you to the Inspector General, the Minister of Information, and um, the Deputy Minister and the whole collaborative effort of this team. As you know, this is what we intend to do, and this was a, 
a very urgent and special press brigade. Thanks to all of you too in the media because we're just a turnaround time to be able to organize this in a period of, 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 of uh, under an hour. And this is important because of the important nature of what's happening in um, the country, particularly that part of you know the country. Um, um, so I would like to also uh, just uh, introduce Mr. Daniel Sando, who you people probably have uh, heard. The Daniel Sando, if you, if you have not seen him, that's the Daniel Sando, you'll be seeing him. Thank you, Juan. And he's with the Minister of Information, Deputy Minister of Technical, for Technical Services at the Ministry of Information, Culture and Tourism. So from time to time, you will see, you will see a collaborative effort. So um, we will keep following this development as the president is very concerned about what's happening. And again, we sincerely share sympathy with the family of the one casualty that we've seen in fatality and are consistently following um, the situation happening at the different health centers across the country. So again, thank you so much. Uh, hopefully, I see you all tomorrow. Thank you. Have a good evening.